Good afternoon. And as you can see, uh, Pastor Matt and myself, we chose to do this a little bit differently. We thought, you know what, it's been a while since we've had a conversation with each other in your presence. That's something we always love doing on a Sunday morning is the banter back and forth. And we just haven't had a chance to do that yet. So we did, we did have that chance. We, I remember on a Sunday that Mr. Squibbles like gave me a call. Oh right yeah, in, in <laughs> yeah there, there was that. Yep, yep. Fair point. Yep. So there we we, that. we have had it. Uh, it just people just haven't really been able to see it. So it is good to it is good to see you. Uh, I like the guitar behind you. Uh, I decorated with the nice little hook on, oh, on my wall. Hook. Um, but hey, how's your week going? How's the week in like COVID? This like number eight, nine, ten. Well, so I, I got some hard news. Yeah, and uh, so this was the news. Today, I got an email this morning from my barber saying that um, the changes, they've just did some last minute uh, COVID changes and as a barber shop, they're not allowed to open for a couple more weeks. So I was actually starting to gear up to not cut my own hair, but, I think I think I'm gonna to have to give it one more go. So for those of you who don't know, I um, I did this myself. What you don't know is that there's a party in the back that I uh, that I don't know what to do with. So that's kind of a hard part, like right. So there was a what in the back party? Party, yeah, like a messy party, kind of like yeah. I wasn't I, sure what <laughs> party yeah. in the back. Yeah, party in the back. So it's not quite a it's not a mullet, right? That's a true party in the back. I, that that would be something if you could grow a mullet yeah. in, in this season. Well, I'm capable. Like it's possible. I I will not. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, like here's the interesting piece. I don't have like if my barber emailed me, it would come from like Michelle. So yeah. <laughs> today today is Michelle and I and, and our like 26th wedding anniversary. I think Michelle oh has actually cut my hair longer than we've been married. So like when we were in college, she heard that I was cutting my own hair and volunteered to help. And so I, I, don't, I don't remember the last time that I went to a barber. Uh, I wouldn't even really know what to, to do in the, the barber <laughs> shop. So, well, first of all, congratulations to the two of you. That's amazing. That's such a cool, cool space for you guys to be and to, to journey through. And um, I can only imagine the insights that have come through living life, uh, choosing to live life with another in that kind of way. So that's really cool. And you have saved yourself thousands of dollars by not getting your hair cut by a, a barber. Like, I'm just telling you. I well, that, That's good. But the interesting piece with the barber is like, since Michelle's my barber, I don't really get to say what I want. So like the thickness of the beard is all dependent on what Michelle and the girls. Ah, so, so that's kind of the payment. So if I'm struggling with your beard length, it's not you I talk to. It would no, be no, no, one, no. Of the, one of the girls. Okay. Not, not me at all. So <laughs> okay. Brent, why, don't I, why don't I pray? Yes, and uh, then we're going to recap kind of this last week, what you talked about, yeah, which sure. is a great message. And uh, then we'll kind of kind of talk about this next week coming up, a challenge for them and, and Sounds what, great. To prepare, what to get ready for on Sunday. So let me pray. God, thanks for friends. Thanks for Trent and uh, just the, the fun that uh, Trent and I get to have serving the people of Renfrew. Uh, God, may you orchestrate this time to be an encouragement and may it also be something that, that is beneficial for our, our, our people and for ourselves. Uh, we love that we get to journey with you and with this community. Uh, we ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Trent, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, just Sunday, just kind of give a quick recap. And uh, if somebody, I, I do want to say this, if somebody didn't get to see it on, on Sunday, if they just go to our YouTube page, yeah, all the, the services are right there and they can click on it and, and watch it. And kind of the beauty with that is, if you want the whole church experience, that hour 15, you can watch that. Or if you just want to hear the message, you, you can scroll right ahead. If you just have 30 minutes that you want to 
listen to it. So make sure you check out Renfrew Baptist Church's YouTube page and make sure you subscribe to it. Um, when you subscribe to it, there's just notifications that come to you that just remind you that there's a new video posted or or there's yeah. something valuable that you can find on our page. So Trent, why don't you yeah. talk about Sunday? Give us a yeah. high level view of Sunday. Sure. Yeah. Well, it was one of those sermons where for me personally, I was like, oh, like there, there was no beating around the bush. It was, we are talking about sin. We're talking about how disobedience uh, is real. And the, the lie we sometimes believe in culture and as individuals is that my actions don't matter. And so, uh, and God never said that, that your actions have no consequences and they don't matter. And so the reflection was first that our actions do in fact matter and they have uh, earthly consequences and possibly eternal consequences. Earthly co consequences, things like, you know, if I push a person, that person falls over. Like that's just a natural consequence of an action. And there are sinful actions disobedient things that we do in our lives that affect ourselves, affect, affect those around us, but ultimately affect God as well, because he's the creator of it all. And that's where we find ourselves being like any action, any sin, like what David said when he was reflecting with his actions of adultery, like against you and you alone have I truly sinned. Yeah. He was acknowledging, yeah, I, I've affected the world, but I've also will always affect my, my God when I sin. So we talked about, yeah, actions matter. And then we also talked about how it, that's the bad news, but that creates the good news as well, that what Christ did for us to pay the price of what we would be owed because of our sin is huge and supreme. And the more we're honest with ourselves and our behaviors, the more we are uh, amazed and drawn into the love of the Father that he would actually still choose to care about us who are sinners. And it's just so easy for us to deny that, to push it, to ignore it, to minimize it. And so, yeah, it was a conversation kind of about all of that. Oh, to, yeah. Trent, I loved, I love that perspective just with, with sin um, because we start to convince ourselves, and you even said this in your message, that, well, look at what everybody else is doing. My sin's not so bad. And so we almost use the justification or it's just me. Like yep. nobody can see it. What I do, no, it's not affecting anybody. And so like great, huge reminders for us. Here's a, here's a fun question for you before I ask you about just kind of like some behaviors to sure. that, that you kind of navigate with sin. So we talked about this. God never said that we spent four weeks kind of coming out of Easter on God never said that. What's one thing that uh, that you kind of go, man, that, that was a pretty cool thing that you learned personally? Like, it's one thing to deliver messages and, and you know, we're, we're kind of preaching to, to a group of people. And in that, in kind of our preparation and our own work, uh, as we prepare that message, there's things that, that we kind of get reminded of. And it might not be something new, but something that we go, oh, man, that was, that was really cool. Do you have anything that, that stood out in these last four weeks that, that you can remember? The first thing that jumps out to me is um, when I was reflecting, even just in this past week, as I was working through all of the previous services, sermons, I, I noticed like that we, we say God said this, but he actually said this. And as I thought about it, um, that back and forth, it's just so common for me to want God to say certain things, to make my life simpler and neater and easier. Um, and so the challenge overall that came to me as I worked on these was how often I try to put words into God's mouth mm -hmm. to make my life easier instead of just submitting and surrendering to his word and acknowledging that that's where the best life comes from. So, and I do, I'll do, I do it not just with the passages we talked about, but yeah. all like so often I'll take a passage and just try to, or say something to make someone feel better, but it's not actually yeah. helpful. Yeah. Well, and it's funny for me, like the interesting piece in this whole journey for, for me was that like we, um, we just start to believe things and I'm not even sure where I started to believe that. 
like like it just became a normal part of 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 my theology even though what the bible says is so different yeah. and it's not these aren't bad things like it's not like they're they're terrible things it's just i've just twisted it a little bit probably yeah. to lessen the the brokenness of the world maybe that's a piece of it is i, I don't want to be confronted with the broken of the world so I want to give a message that's that's kind and nice and comfortable for me rather than you know you talking about sin I mean sin sin no we, we it's black and white it's you know it's that if if we if we actually walk into a life that we're called to sin can't have any footholds in it and so like with that in mind about sin yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's a question I'd love for you to to think about. Maybe you don't have an answer right away, and we can kind of stare at each other for a minute. But like, what what as you fight to overcome sin, and we all have different sins. You you will wrestle with things a little bit differently than 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 I do. As we kind of fight to overcome the the sins that kind of keep trapping us. Um, what's some strategies you have? Like, what are some ways that you actually navigate that? Mm. Um, like for me, let here, yeah, and, go ahead. and yeah, I mean, I'm the guy it. asking the question. So I, yeah. I you know, I, I had the answer in my, in mind for myself. Yeah. Like I, I'm intrigued to hear what, what you do. Like for me, one of the things that I had a guy when I was in, my like undergrad I was at Cape and Ray in Estes Park Colorado what he what he said when he was talking about sin was you know we actually have to change our position so like one of the things that I, I've learned is I have to actually change my position so if I'm sitting it actually is a benefit to stand up and to get some movement in the the more docile I am the more I can let things spin in my head or I can start to do things that, that I, I regret, but with movement, it seems like I'm distracted. So, um, you know, he had mentioned the, the teacher mentioned that, you know, if we're laying in bed and that's a struggle area for us laying in bed, trying to fall asleep and our mind starts racing with all kinds of good or bad thoughts yep. to actually get up, go outside, you'll actually like stop it for a minute. Um, so, th so there's like that piece for me is something that I've, I've held on to is like that whole, like I actually change my posture. Um, and, and then, you know, I think that the simple one for us is if we just open up God's word, we naturally, uh, we naturally stop sinning. Like, <laughs> like there's just that piece of, if I just open up God's word and, and read it, uh, that starts to fill who I am rather than, um, than the thoughts of this world. It, it's that David Psalm 119, yeah. like thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Um, so Trent, have you, have, do you have yeah. any strategies? Well, one of the things for me is when I, is knowing that every, every time or every every temptation uh to sin is trying to get at a a core desire in my life so we don't i don't sin just for no reason i i i go down that path because of something that's been lied to within my heart and so for me the it's been one of the behaviors that kind of helps me win is uh checking in with my emotions, meaning if I'm starting to feel something where I'm slightly agitated, if I can talk, talk to someone about it or even talk yeah. to myself about it, that interrupts the temptation even yeah. before it starts. So that's a bit of a, a preemptive yeah. thing. The more I understand almost like my triggers, yeah. my, like, oh, I'm feeling worked up or I'm feeling angry or I'm feeling lonely or I'm yeah. feeling like, I deserve something, man. That one's a dangerous run. As soon as I think I deserve something, I end up like hurting others, hurting myself. Um, the, no, that's like I love. I love that trend. I think that's huge. I, that's why when we become a, a Christ follower, we're called to live in community rather than 
in isolation. And I think at times we've bought into that lie of, well, these are my thoughts or these yeah. are, this is my right to, to feel this and to suddenly have some outside perspective kind of recenter us yeah. is, is a healthy thing. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you a really simple example. A couple of days ago, um, I didn't tell my roommates there were certain things that I wanted. Um, so it was on me to not like my lack of communication. Yeah. But then I assumed that they would interpret my unspoken interests or requests. And then yeah. because of that, I held resentment. And then I realized this resentment, I don't, I'm not, a, I shouldn't be holding on to it. And I, once, as soon as I let go of that resentment and realized I'm just kind of frustrated at the world, it's like, yeah. And I had to take responsibility for not actually voicing my thoughts, yeah. and my desires. Instantly, that anger or that frustration evaporated, and I realized the enemy was just poking at me, and it was all a lie. Um, and it was all rooted in just being frustrated with what's going on in the world. It had nothing to do with, and frustrated with me not communicating. So, yeah, so that was a huge piece. That's, awesome. so that's a huge that's behavior awesome. uh, that helps me win. That's awesome. Yeah. Trent, do you have any scripture? Like, do you have any like yeah, scripture point. that's kind of a, like an encouragement this week for for us? It's Thursday. Yeah, you know, and the weeks, the weeks so are in, the same. So in in uh, yeah, and in, in thinking about kind of this past Sunday and thinking about moving forward and where we're headed um, in our uh, for this coming Sunday, uh, James is a beautiful. It's a beautiful book, um, and. There's a passage about temptation right at the very beginning, near the beginning, yeah. James 1, uh, verse 13 I'll just, and 14. I'll read it out. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted uh, by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Um, then, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. And so that kind of connects back to what I was sharing earlier yeah. about recognizing that all sin patterns, all be all behaviors that move from temptation into, into action of sin yeah. are connected to, what did it say? Um, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and entice. So as soon as I can acknowledge that desire and that it's being corrupted, that the yeah. enemy is making it evil. Um, that that's a, an important thing in my life, and it's a good warning. Like um, those evil desires that move to sin moves to death. That's yeah. the trajectory. Yeah, and we don't, we don't want to end in death, and so no. we got to cut and that keep off. Keep your Bible open there. Go to James chapter five, and look at like verse like like. I think it's like 13. And as you're looking for that, it's like confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. I'd love for you to, to read that. Um, the, the interesting piece. Yeah, baby. Uh, the interesting piece is this Sunday, I'm going to talk about like, what's it look like to actually have a faith that works in this season that we're in? So I'm going to, I'm going to actually look back at like what we talked about in March and kind of go, okay, we declared that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's going to provide. Yep. The longer we go in this season, we, we start to lose faith in that. And so one of the things I'm learning in this COVID season for me personally is, man, faith was something that we talked about. And, and faith in God was really easy when everything was kind of going well. And it's, it's actually been a re- like calibrating season for me with, with faith. And so I'm going to actually challenge everybody to read the book of James. Cause there's some power pack things like James one starts with the whole, like to the people that are yep. scattered, it sounds like us. And then yep. it just kind of walks, James walks through these like great things, but I'd love for you to read that James five, because then what I'll do is um, I, I'd love for, I, I'd actually love for you to read it. And then I'd love for you to give our people a challenge and then they can get into their day kind of for what the week is. I think it's like five, 13 or 12. Yeah. Just kind of read like five verses there. There's some good verses there. Yep. I got it. Um, yeah. So I'll start at verse 13. 
Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, um, they will be forgiven. Confess, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yeah, and you know, there's certain notes within there that you're like, well, what does anoint our head with oil in a COVID yeah. season look like? And we can, we can figure that out. Um, but something we still can do is that we can confess our sins to each other and pray for each other so that we might be healed. And I love that they use the word healed. It acknowledges that sin is not just about disobedience. It's about wounds and brokenness. And when we talk, when, when we are physicians for each other, the great physician can actually heal some of those things uh -huh. that lead to sin. Yeah. That sin is not just about right and wrong action, but it's about health and well-being and being whole in front of the Lord. And so I, I think that's beautiful. Um, my encouragement, my suggestion for us to consider in these next couple of days as we prepare for Sunday is to reflect on what behaviors help you win in overcoming sin. Hmm. What behaviors help you win? And you might need to reflect, some of you might need to think the negative first. What behaviors help you lose, right? What is it that you, how, how do you act in such a way that causes you to say yes to temptation? But what are those behaviors that help you say no to temptation, help you win? That's See? awesome. Trent, I, if anybody feels comfortable in like emailing us, we would, we would love to, we'd love to hear what behaviors, because I think there's some yeah. behaviors that we might be like, man, that's, that's a brilliant one that we'd actually like, I'd like to put into my life. So really? I think that's awesome. Trent, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Well, let me, let me close in a word of prayer yeah, and then awesome. I'll, I'll hit end on the, on the button there. <laughs> All right, Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to chat with, with each other. And Lord, I just pray that this conversation is a, has been a blessing to those that are listening right now, that they would, as they journeyed in this conversation with us, that they encountered you, that there was an insight gained from your word or through our own testimony of our lives. Lord, if there's insights from others, I just pray that you would encourage them to share it with a friend or a family member or email us. Lord, go with us this day. Help us through the rest of this afternoon that we would um, move in the direction that you call us, that we would begin to reflect more deeply on the behaviors that help lead us mm. to say yes to you and no to temptation. Lord, you love mm. us and you care deeply about us. May we never forget that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks, buddy. Okay.